Every time a publisher has a new license announcement, we get excited. We pull out our wish lists and hope and pray that now is the time our favorites will be published in English. That the manga we've been waiting for will finally be within our grasp. We've all been winners and losers in these scenarios. Sometimes something we really wanted is picked up, and other times we sit there confused wondering, who asked for this title? Either way, I decided it was time to throw my opinion into the mix, but more importantly, sit down and ask myself, what would my top 10 wishlist be? I decided to also constrict this list to only titles that are not available in English, physically or digitally. So now, sit back, relax, and without further ado, dream a little dream with me. Hajime no Ippo by George Morikawa Sitting at over a hundred volumes and thousands of chapters, I know that Kingdom probably has a better chance at being picked up. Still, I can't help but hold out a sliver of hope that one day I'll be able to read this amazing series. The story is about a shy boy named Makinochi Ippo, who, instead of going out with his classmates, choose to be a good boy and help his mother out with the family fishing business. This means he undergoes extreme amounts of physical labor daily without complaint. Unfortunately, because of his demeanor, he is often bullied by his classmates. One day, he is saved by Takamura, who decides to take him to his boxing gym to recover. Once Ippo wakes up, Takamura shows Ippo how to throw a punch to take out some of his aggression on his bullies by hitting a sandbag. Ippo's journey into the world of boxing surpasses any other sports anime and manga I have ever experienced. The way Morikawa writes his character, so that you just don't only care about Ippo, but everyone. Before every match, the story shows what's at stake for both characters. This leaves the reader wishing that both participants could walk away with the W. And that Sendo fight? I still get chills thinking about it. It's a long shot, but at this point, I would take a digital-only release. Anything to finally be able to read Hajime no Ippo. But hey, if you haven't seen the anime, go check it out! Ao Aoshi by Yugo Kabashi and Nahiko Uno. I swear this list isn't going to be all sports titles. The story is about a boy named Ashito who loves soccer. Unfortunately, he comes from a poor family and plays on a team that doesn't have the high aspirations for the sport he has. One day, he catches the eye of a recruiting soccer team, and he's given the chance to play and, more importantly, learn more about the sport he loves. I hadn't heard of this series before last year's anime adaptation, but oh my god, when I did, this anime made me want to read more. Then I found out the manga isn't published in English. I feel like this anime was a little overshadowed by Blue Lock, which is the big soccer anime manga at the moment, but with a completely different vibe. While I still need to read Blue Lock, Aoshi gave me feelings that I hadn't experienced in a while. And I'm not gonna lie, I teared up a few times. The story of struggling while playing a sport, and being told you can't play something based on your size or speed, can be demoralizing. And it takes a tremendously mentally strong person to be able to push past that and still follow their dreams. I hope this gets picked up one day, because I would love to see the rest of Ashito's story. But if not, I hope we get a second anime season from Production IG. Gokuzen by Kozuko Morimoto I told you this list wasn't going to be all sports manga. The story is about a young teacher named Yamaguchi, who starts teaching at an all-boys high school for mostly delinquents. Luckily for her, she's part of a Yakuza clan, so really nothing about this bothers her. She goes so far out of her way to pretend to be normal, which makes for some really hilarious moments. One of the great things about this series was the back and forth between her students trying to figure out if she's just dumb, or if she's really just a badass. She slowly garners respect over the course of the story, and it's nice to see her students actually come to care about her, and try harder for their own future. Since this is a completed Japanese series with 15 volumes, I hope this series stands a better chance at getting picked up. While we wait, there's a pretty good anime that will have you smiling at some point. Shinari Nar Phantom. The title's on the screen. I'm just gonna call it The Phantom of the Opera Manga by Miao Nano. I love musicals, and if you put me in a corner and demanded that I list a favorite, it's probably gonna be The Phantom of the Opera. Not only because of the 2004 movie with Gerard Butler and Emmy Rossum, it was a damn great film though, but also because I've seen the stage play several times, including on Broadway. 
The music, the plot, the effects used on stage to make you believe that Christine and the Phantom are actually descending into his labyrinth beneath the Opera House. Nothing comes close. So when I say I love it, I love it. And you need to see it live on stage if you haven't. Uh, what was I talking about? Seeing that there is a manga based on this out there and ongoing, I just... I want it to do well, and I want someone to lice it in English so badly. I cannot tell you my level of hype just seeing these covers. I can't read Japanese, but if I could, I would find some way to purchase all of these volumes. As this is a new series, I can't really speak to the synopsis other than what I've seen online, and what my understanding of the Phantom story and cover art tell me. We have Eric and Christine. Eric meets her and somehow becomes her vocal coach. I just want to read it. Look at this art. It's beautiful, and if the story is anything like its namesake, then I am 110% on board. Devil's Line 2, Gyakushu, by Ryo Hanada. This is the sequel to Devil's Line, which was published in English by Kodansha. This sequel looks like it will be a continuation of the vampire story with our main characters, Anzai and Tsukasa. Devil's Line is a very interesting take on vampires, and their integration into a predominantly human society. With a wide variety of its cast of characters, Devil's Line ended with me still wanting to know more about their fates. The sequel is currently still releasing, and I'm hoping once it has a few volumes under its belt, we'll see it in English someday. Since I limited myself to only one baseball series on this list, Major by Takia Masuda is that title. A story that literally spans the entire life of Goro Honda, the son of a professional baseball player, from kindergarten to his own adult aspirations of chasing his baseball dream. This title has everything you expect from a sports adrenaline-inducing series. Goro faces countless hardships along the way, and not just ones related to baseball. Seriously, this poor boy. Thank goodness he had Momoko Hoshino. At 78 volumes, it's probably unlikely that an English publisher would take a chance on this series, even digitally. But I'll still keep my fingers crossed. Aba no Basket by Kaito Gaku Off the popularity of Boys Run the Riot, Kaito Gaku started an ongoing basketball series. Given how much I enjoyed Boys Run the Riot, I am highly anticipating reading more of their works. Aba no Basket just started last year, but I have high hopes for the series eventually getting picked up by an English publisher. The guy she was interested wasn't a guy at all, by Sumoko Arai. Usually I don't like episodic storytelling, but this manga that started on Twitter executed it well. With a stunning lime green background and accent color amidst the normal monochrome characters, there was just something about this vibe that just hooked me. The story is about a high school girl who visits a CD store and ends up having a crush on the guy that works there. Like the title says, the guy in the store isn't a guy at all, and is actually her classmate that she's never actually talked to. I'm a sucker for the old gender bender trope, and a case of an adorable little miscommunication morphing into genuinely getting to know someone. While only about 50 chapters in, and one volume released in Japan, I think this series has a better shot of being picked up down the line. Still, I hope the mangaka continues to write the story so that we have a chance to one day read this in English. Is it because of love that I can't resist? By Sorohana Mia. I first found this manga on Twitter, and all I know is that it's a BL story about a delinquent boy and an honor student who saves him. Art style looks lovely, but I'm here for opposites attract. Here's hoping the story does well enough that Kadansha might take a chance. Even if it's banished to digital jail, I'd want to read it. Last, but certainly not least, Queen and the Tailor. By Scarlett Barucco. Just look at this cover. The art style is beautiful, with top-tier character design. Seasoned older man and fashionable younger one? Yes, I want to read more! The story is about a young man who seeks out a famous tailor. While their first interaction is anything but perfect, an attraction starts to build between the two as they spend more time together. The tailoring aspect is interesting to me, especially since I don't see it much in manga. Not only that, but the whole extra layer of intimacy from taking measurements when creating clothing that is specifically made for a person. Spicy. Tokyo Pop, I'm rooting for you to license this one volume series. With the sheer amount of manga titles constantly being created and dragged out of obscurity, there is always something out there for us to read. 
I know there are limitations on what English publishers can and can't take risks on, but still, it's nice to dream. Maybe one day the titles on this list will be on our shelf. Do you have any manga titles that you wait anxiously for each license announcement? Let me know in the comments below. I'll see you all in the next video. I'm Zath. Have a good day.